Hello, everyone. How are you guys? Good. How are you? Um, so I'll be talking, I, I know you guys know this, but I'll be talking to your kids this week, and um, I'm just going to go over some things that um, can help you guys help your kids, but also stuff that I'll be addressing with them as well, just to kind of give you um, a little background of that, okay? Um, so what are your kids interested in? on social media right now? What apps are they using? YouTube. YouTube? Mm, yeah. TikTok, obviously. TikTok. We do know that one. Anything else that's like new or no? They're mostly on TikTok. Okay. <laughs> they've been trying to get on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat. All of them. They've been trying to get on all of them. Okay. Um, so one of the suggestions um, would be to just familiarize yourself with those apps and like all the privacy settings and whatnot. Um, the best way to protect your child is going to be like what we're doing this week is talking to them, um, just helping them develop critical thinking skills, teaching them or helping them say no to people, um, helping them with some behavioral skills. And then just skills that's going to help them make good choices in the future um, because it's just as important to start helping them navigate the world online as it is to offline. Um, so obviously kids are online from in school, on their friends' computers, laptops, tablets, cell phones, games. Um, that's a big one. Not a lot of people think about that. Um, there's no stopping them from going online, so it's really important just to talk to them about like rules of what you expect of them when they do go online. So technology isn't going to catch everything, so you can change certain settings. Obviously, we'll talk about that a little more later, but it's, it's not going to stop them from getting on certain apps. Um, implementing certain restrictions on your child's internet access isn't going to stop everything, so start a conversation about safety as early as possible, um, even before they go online. Talk about boundaries, healthy relationship, consent, rejection. Um, some good questions to ask is, what's your favorite app? Why? Um, who do you talk to when you play games? How do you know them? What games do you play and what are they about? Um, I think it's important to be honest with your kids and let them know um, you're there no matter what. Just letting them know that even if they think that you might get upset, that it's important that they communicate with you. Um, these conversations should be continuous. It's not something that we're just going to have like a conversation this week. I don't mind coming back and talking again with them, you know, as they get older as well, especially because, you know, the older they get, the more in detail you can talk to them about certain things. Um, especially because some of these conversations can be a little difficult. Um, good news with online risk is most children are not getting into trouble online, but it's still important to think about um, things that they might come across, inappropriate content, um, they might have issues with online privacy, um, enticement, strangers reaching out to them, cyberbullying. Um, So it's important to talk at any age about the internet with them, even four. <laughs> you might as well start. Um, so younger children, it's important to talk about etiquette, just like being polite in person. It's important to be polite online. Um, talk to them about if they come across inappropriate content, how to handle that. I'll be doing that this week as well. Um, explain what pop-ups are. Explain what passwords are. Um, and the stranger danger online is important to bring up as well. And you know, as they get older, more in detail conversations about cyberbullying, sexting, posting personal or inappropriate information, and meeting offline. So we'll kind of cover a basis this week when I talk to them about some of that, but not in depth. So it'll be important to talk to them, you know, as they get older about those things so they can de develop better skills of how to handle those. Um. And just so parents know, um, this presentation, a different version of this presentation, will be presented to the students grades four through six. Um, so we'll be talking to them in the cafeteria. 
um, and we'll be talking to them about some of these topics. Um, personally, as a principal, <coughs> I deal a lot with cyberbullying, mm -hmm. um, which unfortunately always usually happens over the weekend. And so on Mondays, you know, we have students that come in feeling upset, um, having things said to them or about them online. And um, sometimes the parents are aware, and sometimes the parents are not aware. And so it's about having those really hard conversations um, and bringing families in. And, and there are you know, some students that say, well, that was over the weekend. But if it falls into school um, and there's an issue with students at school, the school has to respond to those concerns. Um, so we will always want to protect students, but we want to let them know things that you do or the things that you say that may be unkind um, can show up at school. And, and then we have to respond and educate students, but also, unfortunately, can be considered cyberbullying. And so there's a host of protocols that we have to follow through with to make sure that all students stay safe. So I have lots of conversations. It usually starts in fifth or sixth grade here um, that I've noticed. Um, it can go younger, though. Um, and it's, it's really unfortunate. So we always try to be kind, unfortunately, when kids are have devices and they're left on their own, um, to use those devices to communicate, to game. Um, that's where we see most of the issues happening here. Agreed. <laughs> <laughs> I do talk about that a little too. Um, yes? Will you be mentioning the sexting to the? No. Well, that would be okay. <laughs> no. Okay. Um, it's just, it's important because obviously that's going to be an issue in the future. Yeah. Um, or, but just talking about some of this stuff is going to help build, you know, that conversation in the future down the road, not now. <laughs> That's like a middle school um, type thing, but it's, it's, it's a just... a great question. That's why you have a parent. Yes. Race, and then student. Yes, exactly. <laughs> it's, it's definitely different. It's m most of it, um, when I talk to the kids about, um, like, conversations, um, via messaging, texting, um, is really just going to be like, if something makes you feel bad, say something to an adult, like talk to your parents. Um, if, if you feel like something's wrong, you should be telling someone type thing for this age at least. Um, so why start conversations when they're young? Exactly, leading into that. Um, just building a strong relationship, developing trust, be more comfortable talking about these topics. So if you're obviously comfortable talking about the internet now with them, it'll be a little easier when it comes to the more uncomfortable topics. Um, as previously mentioned, it's important to have continuous and open conversations with them. Um, just using specific examples in daily life teachable moments. So um, I came across a couple of questions that I thought um, I chose a couple that um, stuck out to me more, but asking them, have you received a comment, post, picture, video, or chat from someone that made you feel uncomfortable? Asking them that. Um, have any of your friends' behavior online or offline ever made you or others feel uncomfortable? And then following up with, what did you do? And what are some of the things uh, you could do to avoid, help, or solve the situation if it happens again? And then allowing them to kind of come up with their own solution and explaining um, and just talking to them about it that way. So some inappropriate things that your child may encounter online, pornography, excessive violence, hate speech, risky or illegal behavior. Um, just it's important that when they do come across stuff like this, um, just being the person that they can come talk to. Because like I said, I'm going to tell them and talk to them about if you see something inappropriate, you should be telling your parents. Um, so just remember to listen without judgment, help and take action, such as reporting or blocking the content, remaining calm when they reach out, respect boundaries, um, and just be kind. It's like it's okay if you get have a strong emotion about it, but just trying to remain calm so they do want to come and tell you. So what you can do, um, obviously seeing inappropriate content online may negatively affect them and they might feel guilty or shamed. So avoid frightening them. 
if they do open up to you about inappropriate content they've seen, listen attentively and stay calm. Tell them it's not their fault. Ask open-ended questions. Um, answer their, any questions they might have. Help them report it and kind of create like a safety plan. So maybe looking into the settings um, and seeing if there's a way that you can avoid certain things popping up. Um, I think one of the examples that I will be using with the kids is um, say you're watching a YouTube video with your friend and then the video ends and then the next video starts playing um, and it's involving um, bad language. What are you gonna do? And having them kind of talk to me and say what they would do after I've already explained to them what they should do when they come across certain um, stuff online. So I'll be telling them to turn off the screen, use the back button, um, telling a trusted adult even if they feel scared or they're nervous that they might get in trouble and reporting it online um, through whatever app it is. So it's important to learn how to set up some of these privacy settings, making sure that they're only sharing with friends, not the public. Um, only friends can comment on their posts. Any personalized ads are turned off, and most importantly, the location services are turned off. Um, being a police officer, that's my biggest one. Um, definitely double checking to make sure um, that they're not sharing their location. Um, I actually saw I don't know if kids know this, but um, if you post certain things in the area, if you post it to like the public, um, like to Hadley, it'll tag it and it'll show. There was a video recently of kids on the school bus. It wasn't anything too crazy, but I figured you know it's important to say, talk to your kids about what they're sharing and where it goes because Hadley can see it if you tag Hadley. Um, Blocking users um, is pretty easy. I'm sure we all can navigate that, just the three buttons on the top, or even explaining to them how to do that so they know how to do it um, in case they are afraid to say something to someone, um, and even showing them how to report things within the app. So telling children uh, what they should not post won't stop them from doing it. Um, help them engage in safer online behaviors by giving them accurate information, agreeing on what to post, and um, helping them report things if they need to, explain the risks of things, um, talk to them about using kind and respectful language, posting pictures or videos that lift themselves or others up, um, to follow rules, codes of conduct, just like you should off, they should offline, being honest, respectful, leading by example and never resharing inappropriate content to a pers uh, of a person to others. Um, like illegal behaviors or bullying, offensive language, threats of violence, underage drinking, drug use, it's more of a future thing, hate speech, um, but just talking about certain things that they shouldn't be sharing and how it could affect them in the future. Like the school might have to get involved if they do certain things. Um, how in the future it could affect their jobs, getting into college, um, and really damage their relationship with their friends as well. So um, I'll be talking to them as well about some online privacy stuff, like what's okay and what's not okay to post. Um, some okay things to share, pictures of families, as long as they post with permission. Um, some casual conversations in a game is okay, but um, if anything's said to them that makes them feel uncomfortable, they should be reaching out to an adult. Um, certain geolocation stuff is okay. Like if you guys have their location, um, that's appropriate. However, sharing it with everyone, obviously inappropriate. Um, and just talking about certain family information that shouldn't be shared. So like when you guys are traveling or um, when you're home, when you're not home, what kind of activities they're involved, certain things like that. Um, I'll be talking with them about personal information, so passwords, home address, location, cell phone number, email addresses, again, travel plans, family information, other personal information that they shouldn't be sharing. Um, 
obviously it's a risk. I won't be explaining this part to them, but obviously it's a risk if somebody gets their birthdays um, or their full names. Identity theft can happen as a kid. You don't have to be an adult to have that happen to you. Um, I'll be talking about certain pop-ups and how it's not okay to put in your home address or trying to sign up for winning a prize when something pops up and says, oh, you want a free trip to Hawaii. Um, I'll also be talking a little bit about cyberbullying and one of the rules about being online um, is that it's okay to share things, but with your parents' permission. So I would suggest um, talking to them more about not revealing too much personal information online. Um, establish rules about what they can share. Learn about the reporting options on any websites or games specifically they're using. Check privacy settings, help them create strong passwords, and talk about your friends list um, and coming up with safety plans. Um, with the friends list, I think it's important just to talk about how you know, you might meet someone online, but you can't always trust them because they're strangers. So we shouldn't be having people we don't know on our friends list. Um, Oops, I think I want one to. Nope. Um, online enticement. So involving an individual communicating with someone believed to be a child through the internet with the intent to commit certain offenses, including a child being requested to send images of themselves or meet face to face done through social media, messaging apps, and gaming as well. Most of it occurs on social media. Uh, majority of these incidents happen to older teens, but there are also younger kids who receive inappropriate messages from strangers. So it's really important to keep in mind the privacy settings on any app that they have um, and kind of trying to just protect them from that as much as we can at least. Talking to them about staying away from strangers online and how stranger danger exists online as well. Um, talking about healthy relationships and certain red flags and just developing rejection skills and allowing them to say no to people and going to um, a trusted adult. So just again, uh, set rules with them about meeting offline. I'll be doing the same. That's one of the things that I'll be bringing up is if somebody asks you online to meet, that's a hard no and that they should be talking to you guys about that if that were to be the case. Um, it's important to know your child's online friends and teach your child about warning signs. So talk to them about certain behaviors that are inappropriate. For example, um, if somebody they know were to ask them to keep secrets, share pictures, if they make them feel bad or if they ask them to meet face to face. So cyberbullying, sending mean texts, photoshopping images, creating fake profiles, posting fight videos, spreading rumors. Um, sharing embarrassing or inappropriate pictures of others, sending threatening or harassing comments, harassing or stalking. Um, I won't go this in depth with them about it, but I'll talk about speaking kindly online, just like we should in person. Um, some kids, those who don't even use social media can experience cyber, cyber bullying. Um, some important things to keep in mind is if they get into gaming online, um, they can be exposed to inappropriate language while chatting, being taunted by others, targeted by more experienced players, and ignored by players or excluded from playing. So it's really important to just keep in mind with gaming that cyberbullying does exist. Just some differences um, between the two. Um, if, if you notice that your kid is doing some of, the, some of these um, behaviors, they could be being cyberbullied. So suddenly stopping using the computers or a cell phone, acting nervous when receiving um, any type of message. They seem uneasy about going to school, withdraw from friends and fr family, isolate in their room, and experience mood changes. So um, it's kind of important just to pay attention to those kind of behaviors just to, because they might not feel comfortable talking about it, you know. 
So what you can do for your child, just support them, problem solve together and think of ways to address the issue, consider saving any type of evidence if it exists and it escalates to that, um, block any type of person who's cyberbullying them, do not reply to any messages, set up new accounts, talk to the school and if necessary report it to us. Um, some kids might be a victim of cyberbullying, some might be the cyberbully. I think it's just as important to keep in mind um, noticing those types of behaviors as well um, and teaching kids that are exhibiting those behaviors, you know, teaching them that that's not what they should be doing. So some signs of it, quickly switching screens or closing programs, um, using a computer at all hours, getting unusually upset if they cannot use the computer, avoids discussing about anything what they're doing, and has multiple um, accounts. So how to prevent this? Help monitor and intervene in your child's online behavior in the same way you would offline. Establish expectations for online and offline behavior, set consequences for bullying and cyberbullying and just model good online and offline behavior for them. So some um, tech options, you can install filtering and monitoring software that can help pr uh, protect your children from seeing certain content online and even notifying you if they've received inappropriate messages. Consult, you can consult with cell phone providers or internet services and they can assist with blocking certain websites. Um, it could also be blocked from the wireless router, so any type of uh, device that accesses it doesn't cannot like go on TikTok or something. Um, you can call your provider for that. Correct. Um, although it's a little, if you're using TikTok, maybe just use self-service if that was the route that you were going. But um, you can block it, so they, at least through them, if they have any other devices or whatnot. They can't gain access just by going on the computer instead of an iPad. Um, research options for other mobile devices. Um, there are some built-in monitoring options or software that you can purchase. Look at individual apps. Um, some have the capability of turning off chat features or limiting posts and explore built-in security features. Um, I learned this recently and I thought it was pretty uh, cool, but Google has a free safe search option, parental controls and other security tools. And just keeping in mind um, when you talk to them, just you know, setting some ground rules, um, research anything before you buy it, whether it's a program or the devices that they're gonna be using, um, and then just go beyond safeguards and have those conversations with your kids about internet safety. Do you guys have any questions? No? <laughs> well, I didn't keep you past the PTO meeting, did I? <laughs> That's quite all right. Great job. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. And thank you for having these conversations with our students. Oh, yeah. yeah. I think it means a lot. I think Exactly. I agree. I definitely agree. It's, um, you know, a parent can only tell your kid the same thing so many times. Um, but I think at least if you guys are saying, talking and saying the same things that I'm saying, you know, it'll kind of maybe solidify it for them. So something that I have a hard time with, like, I come into this quite a bit, but with the problems of the social media, but... Um, is if somebody's sending them pictures mm -hmm. that, so one of them started talking, to, I think the conversation started on TikTok, then is sending pictures that it's a little girl that they're talking to. But I'm saying you don't know that this is a little girl. Like if somebody took, say, your picture off of my Facebook, they could be sending it to somebody, mm -hmm. but not having like a real life example, like, oh my gosh, this happened to so-and-so that I know. Like it's just mom saying, Yes. That could be a grown man, like, sending you pictures, pretending to be a little girl and having this conversation. Like, mm -hmm. Yes. So I'll, I'll cover a little bit of it, like, with Stranger Danger um, online, but being like, you can't trust everyone. Just like you, you can't trust strangers in public. You can't trust somebody messaging you that you haven't met in real life. That, like, you don't know if they're being honest with you because not everybody is honest. 
So we'll be talking about that a little, um, which will help, hopefully, for them to believe you. Right. <laughs> I mean, that's, yeah, it's one of those, like, if somebody that they knew got kidnapped, then it'd be a little bit easier to not that, like. Yes. Like, um, so I have a little bit of a TikTok following. So they are on TikTok. Mm -hmm. But their accounts are private, and they're only allowed to have people that they know on theirs and comment. But, or they have some friends of friends. But something else that I run into is they've posted, um, they've made TikToks where they're wearing like Hadley Amherst mm -hmm. softball yep. shirts, or they're Hadley Elementary like sweatshirts, and that's a you cannot be doing that. Like, yeah. I mean, even if their account is private. Like, that's just something you, you cannot have something that says. What yeah, I, I agree with that because there's screen recording. Like, people right. can save videos. Like, it doesn't, just because it's private, doesn't mean it's forever private. Yeah, maybe that's something you can mention to them that, like, even if it's private, someone could take it and repost it somewhere right. that's not private. Mm -hmm. Yes. So that's, that's a kind I can of add that. You need to be making sure that it doesn't say um, when they first got on social media. They were on mine, mm -hmm. um, and they would comment like, "Mom, something." Like I, at, at some point, I blocked them. <laughs> like, you can't comment on my TikToks because people read my comments, and then they're gonna be like, "Oh, that's her kid," and then they're gonna go search you. Mm -hmm. So they're not allowed on on mine because I like yes. safety reasons. But like we talk about this all the time about like not posting certain things, not wearing certain things. Like you don't want. You never post your last name. Mm -hmm. um, now, when I started, I had my last name on there because I wasn't expecting to have a following. I just thought it was like Facebook, and I didn't know about <laughs> it, right? So that's true. But um, so they did at least know when they were when one of them was sneaky and made her own Instagram and Facebook. So they at least used a fake name, but <laughs> <laughs> got taken down. But things, you know, you don't post your last name, or and then be wearing things. Yes, I mean, kind of like. I guess it's like bringing it right back to messaging on AOL, like right. having a different name, username that isn't your name. Right. So, so they did at least like, and it's okay. Like, I don't mind if they use their first names. Do not use their last names. Like, you're making it very easy for people to look you up. Um, yeah. I will bring up the um, the clothing though. I think that's that's a good point. Um, just that. It's just some way that somebody can get their information. So, and and it's also okay. I mean, I think it's it's okay to tell kids to we're taking a break from social media or we're stepping away yes. from social media. So we talk to kids a lot about that. As yeah, well. or like having certain online time or only yeah. limiting it. Right. Right. Um. So I think that's important too. So Snapchat was not something that I allow, and I didn't even have Snapchat myself. And then I signed up for it, and my first suggested friend was one of my kids. So, <laughs> Is that how you found out? That's how I found out. Oh no! But so here's this thing for parents, because now I found this like I've run into this a few times. So she had the app, or she had she was actively using it. The app was not on her phone or her iPad. She was deleting the app, so, right, so j j the icon was never there, so she knew she wasn't allowed to have so she it. she logs on on a browser? No. So she would download it, log in, app, use it, and then delete it the, app. the app. Right. And wow. <laughs> so now, this last time, I couldn't figure out where that, that, that girl came from. I couldn't figure out where that, like, and her behavior, she was hiding something, but I couldn't figure out what. Mm -hmm. And I'm looking, and this is how I found it. Like, okay, there's a Facebook, there's an Instagram under fake names. Not a big deal. She's not going to be in trouble for that. Her behavior is not, like, that's not what she's acting this way about. Like, she used the fake name. Like, fine, I didn't say you could have that, but. Yeah, so you picked up on those, so, like, different behaviors of, like, so, quickly putting the phone down. Something else wrong mm -hmm. here. So the only way that I found out about Snapchat was there's a way, and I don't remember how I did it, but there's a way that you can see how many minutes per day you've spent on a certain app. Mm -hmm. It like, has a list. <gasps> what? what? So, right, so that's, 
hold your Snapchat for 11 minutes today. So just because the icons like aren't there doesn't mean that they're not. Yeah, that's. And that's the thing about kids. Like, kid, they're better with technology than I am. Oh, definitely. I, I, w I never, I honestly never would have thought about a kid deleting the app and then re-downloading it yeah, to use it. Like on iPhone, there's a way to um, go to your home screen, and I can unclick any of these these web pages if I have my app store and do this and click done, and they're not there anymore. Like that's the whole, what she was the saying. The whole page of apps will be gone. I'm too old for this. That's why it, it makes it hard for me. The bottom one right here. Yeah. And click it again. Yeah. Then those whole pages whole page go away? apps that are, aren't being shown on the screen anymore. Oh. Like there's whole, like, what is it, 30 apps. So it doesn't show. erase the apps. No, but. Do you have a really apps on your phone? Or yeah, I do have a lot of apps. I put a lot of these screens. And, and then those screens never not show up. shown ever, yeah. See, and that's the thing about, like, the kids are smarter than, like, yeah. than I'm not, like, that tech savvy. So, like, yeah, I was standing there for a couple hours trying to figure out what the behavior was, like, <laughs> and so, but then the way that I found it was the minutes per, like, when I finally got to like, okay, this is the minutes per app yeah. on that day that was used. So, mm -hmm. there's, there's a Tricky. <laughs> Tricky. <laughs> yeah. But, I, like, I mean, I know you said that you talked to your kids about, like, certain things online, what's okay. So, obviously, those kinds of conversations right. are going to benefit you if they're hiding what you think it should be inappropriate for their age, but all of their friends are probably also doing. So just having that conversation about, oh, this is an acceptable behavior if you're having this kind of conversation with somebody. If somebody asks you to meet in person, you don't know who they are, inappropriate, like those, I think, can help.